Hi, I'm Shana Rose with Vogue Knitting Magazine. Today, I'm interviewing Olympic gold medalist diver and knitter, Tom Daly. Hi, Tom. It's an honor to talk to you about knitting. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm super excited about it. Me too. Everyone knows about your famous dog sweater knitting at the Olympics. It inspired so many people to want to learn how to knit. How do you feel about that? It's so surreal to even think that anybody even cared about me knitting because for me, my knitting at the Olympics was my way of being able to escape everything to like find my peace, find my calm and to be able to not worry about my competitions coming out. So really it was like my superpower that everyone, I guess, enjoyed seeing me do. And I started off with a dog jumper and then I made my Olympic cardigan. And yeah, I had lots of projects on the go that day. I love that. Knitting really is a superpower. Well, how did you learn how to knit? I learned how to knit in the beginning of March in 2020. So I've only been doing it for about two and a half years. And I just taught myself through YouTube knitting tutorials because I had no idea how to do it. And as soon as lockdown happened, it was like, you know, you're on your own and you just had to um, figure things out for yourself. So for me, YouTube tutorials were the easiest way to learn. And each time I did a project, I would do something like I had to have a different stitch or a different thing that I would add into the mix so that I could learn a new skill the exact same thing. I learned how to knit in March 2020 and I just kept building just like you. So I need to ask, what's your favorite stitch? Oh, that's a good question. For me, the most uh, the thing is I am quite traditional when it comes to knitting. Like if I'm doing some knitwear, I do love a traditional like stockinette stitch just because it looks like a traditional knit, like a knit jumper but I love cabling. I love to do any kind of cabling. So um, when I love to play around with cables in a way that is different to just creating like a, a CB4 or like, or something where you're just like changing them in the direction. I like to use multiple strands to either like do like a braided stitch. And I think those look really cool to do like a chunky braided uh, cable. That's one of my favorite things to do. Completely agree. It is so fun to cable knit. It adds just so much spice to your piece. Well, Absolutely. besides cabling, what do you love about knitting? I love the fact that with knitting, you can start with an idea in your head that you might have seen some parts, like I find, I find inspiration from so many different places when I'm walking around, when I see people wearing things, the different shapes and the cuts. And what I love about it is that you can take so many different ideas and bring them all together from nothing and then create this piece of like I always prefer to knit clothing because I feel like there's something really cool to be able to start from nothing create something that either you can wear or you can gift to someone else and there's something that's really rewarding about finishing a piece of knitting completely I just love making clothing too because it's something that you can wear and something that you made that you can use so it's just really full circle but since the Olympics speaking of clothing you started made with love by Tom Daly can you tell me more about this yeah, I started uh, Made With Love because, well, initially I had started an Instagram um, about six months after I learned how to knit called Made With Love by Tom Daly because I didn't want to clog up my Instagram feed with lots of knitting because I became obsessed with it and I thought other people may not want to see me knitting. But then as it kind of developed, I started getting a little bit more following on the Instagram and then throughout the Olympics, my Instagram went up through the roof, which was really exciting. And then I thought, maybe you make it easier and more accessible for people to learn how to knit so i started doing tutorials and then creating these kits that have the yarn the needles and the patterns to be able to make something yourself at home and i just had so much fun with the design process and being able to share my passion passion for knitting and it's just i i don't know i feel like there's something really exciting about slow fashion and making something yourself completely and that is so awesome but knitting has so many life lessons woven, pun intended, into it. What lessons has it taught you? Oh God, a, pe a lot of patience. Because when I first started knitting, it was, it, I almost got like quite frustrated at the, a lot of it. Because I was like, oh, why can't I do it? Like, oh, everything's like, my stitches are coming off my needles and I don't, I don't know where to put my hands. And it actually taught me to learn how to be patient. And that sometimes when you start something again, you're not starting from scratch, you're starting from experience. And that's something that I've really had like used as a lesson going forward. I love that quote. You're not starting from scratch, you're starting from experience. I think that that's so important for new knitters to learn. And yeah. as they make mistakes and don't know where to put their hands and drop stitches to remember that. 
But where is That's your cool. favorite place to knit besides the Olympics? Because that would be my favorite. <laughs> I, you know what the the fun thing is, I every night once my son goes to bed, I make a cup of tea and I go up to my living room and I sit and. Uh, with my husband and we're like watching a t like a TV show or something and I just love being able to just sit on the sofa and just knit. That's one place that I love to knit but then also sometimes if I'm for example on holiday recently when we were in California I would like sometimes just sitting in the shade by the pool or under the umbrella on the beach and just bringing out your knitting needles and there's just something so relaxing about being able to do that by the water by the ocean usually. That sounds so relaxing and that sounds so British of you with the cup of tea. Yeah, but yeah exactly. It's very British, but what is your favorite pattern to knit? The big question everyone wants to know. Ooh. Oh gosh, I would say of course all the made with love patterns, but you know, <laughs> for me, um, you know, lots of the patterns that I, my first ever pattern that I ever worked from was a kit from a British company called Stitch and Story. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it, they they sell kits as well. And it was a jumper that I made. It was a Charlie Brown sweater that I made for my son, Robbie. And I absolutely loved it. And then also I followed lots of patterns from uh, like Paint Box and also Wool and the Gang. So there's lots of different patterns that I like to follow. I love all of those kits. I've done them before. But can you tell us about some of your upcoming projects? Yes, so there's lots of different things that are in the pipeline with Made With Love. Like the collection that's like dropping most recently is going to be the Summer of Love collection, which is a lot of a light, lighter weight knits, cardigans, vests that are all in kit form. Um, there's some blankets and there's also some wall hanging things as well, like so macrame uh, things uh, like plant hangers. Um, so trying to like venture into like more of the gifting space as well, rather than just doing clothing all the time. And I have lots, I'm currently working on the design process for spring, summer 23. So that, that's something that's really exciting and it's going to be very colorful and very fun shapes and designs. So I'm super excited to be able to share those soon. Those sound so cool and I can't wait for you to share them. And when I interviewed Mrs. Obama last year for Vogue Knitting, I forgot to ask her my signature question. So I can't forget to ask you right now. What's your favorite meal and dessert? Oh gosh, that's a good one. <laughs> Um, I do love sushi, but I feel like it's not really like a meal thing. So I, I'm, I'm gonna have to say, and this is gonna sound really, really British. I do love bangers and mash. If you know what bangers and mash are, they're like I sausages. Don't. <laughs> so it's like sausages and like a uh, an onion gravy on top of mashed potatoes, and it's it's just like a very British thing to eat. It's delicious. And then sticky toffee pudding with custard is one of my favorite things. For and I don't know if you know what that is either, but nope. it's basically a sponge that's made with dates. And so it's like a really chewy brownie almost, but there's no chocolate in it. So it's like this chewy sponge that has loads of toffee sauce all over it. And then some nice custard around the outside. It's just, it's really good. It's very British. So whenever you come to London, you have to try that really British, but it sounds really good. Well, I'm going to let you go now and eat some of that really good food. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me.